Kia ora, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of the day you're watching the Kiwi Football Fix. Welcome, nice to have your company. Goran Paladin with you as always. And we've got a massive show today, tonight, this morning. You get the drift. Uh, we've got the, the two head coaches, two head coaches from the ISPS Honda Men's Premiership Final. Jose Figuera from Auckland City FC going head to head with Scott Hales out of Team Wellington. That is later in the program, but it's a huge honour to welcome in all white striker and star for Sydney FC, Costa Barbarousas, to the program. Costa, thanks for your time on the Kiwi Football Fix, my friend. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. No, no dramas at all, mate. Now, listen, Sydney FC. They've um, copped a little bit of negative press uh, over the, 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 the months, the, you know, over Christmas and whatnot, but they've bounced back recently with back-to-back -back wins against Western United and the Newcastle Jets. First of all, what has clicked for the side in those two performances that wasn't clicking uh, previously? Yeah, I think a couple of things. I think, firstly, we had catch-up games to play, which people might not look too much into, but when you think about uh, other teams picking up wins and you need to actually get those wins to catch up, uh, it's a lot harder than playing at the same time as everyone else. Uh, I think our performances have been good for the most part. Uh, and I think we just had the killer instinct and uh, the desire that we had sometimes to close games out the last couple of weeks. So playing catch up and also the, the disruption of a, a COVID season, I suppose those are contributing factors to where Sydney FC was on the ladder to where they are now. Yeah, for sure. But I think also if you look at our games, if you watch the whole game, I think we're playing some great stuff still. Uh, you know, us guys up front, we maybe missed a few chances in the last few games that we should have scored. Uh, we conceded some soft goals. Uh, but look, we need, as champions, we need to show some... Uh, resilience and we did that in the last couple of games which is great we've got six points now uh, and we need to keep a roll goal in the match against um western united what was going on with andrew durante's red card at the end there I th it's the hardest i've seen to hit someone to be honest <laughs> <laughs> i think it, to be fair to Jura, i think he's just trying to give a little love love tap <laughs> I love and it just uh, he doesn't know his own strength maybe yeah yeah, yeah. he um yeah, built like a Greek god and uh, obviously has the power of one running through those fingertips, eh? So back in the winner's yeah. circle, Costa, which must feel good because, um, look, some of those, those reports that you read online in newspapers, they, they haven't been overly positive, not just for the team, but for you personally. Uh, how do you and your teammates feel about those, those negative reports? Yeah, look, I think it's no secret that and the team's won the league two times in a row and is still there or thereabouts most years. People want to see a change, you know. If, if they admit it or not, they want to see somebody new at the top, uh, their own team doing well, which is understandable. So as champions, you need to keep adapting and getting better. Like I said, I think we actually are playing some really good stuff and we just haven't had the, the cutting edge uh, personally. Uh, myself, like you said, uh, you know, everyone involved in the team needs to needs to score and defend. But the criticism is pretty normal for a team that expects to win every week and every year. Mm. So when you look at your own form, and I suppose we are our harshest critics, aren't we? Whenever we do anything in life, we, we look at ourselves the most harshly of, of all. So if you had to assess your own performances to date... Where, where are you letting yourself down? Yeah, in the final sort of touch, I guess. I think uh, if you see my build-up play, uh, the runs I'm making, uh, the way I'm helping the team without the ball, I think it's some of the best stuff I've played in my career. But uh, at the end of the day, I need to score goals too. So uh, I'm trying to do it better every day. I'm working hard every day in the training pitch. So you just got to uh, be confident in yourself and, and think it's going to come at some point. Yeah, and, and confidence for you isn't really an issue. You've been a professional for, what is it now, 14 years? Um, and, and you know that form 
and and it, it comes and goes, doesn't it? It sort of ebbs and flows. And so at the moment, you, you've scored, what, three goals from 11 appearances. At some point, the tide will change, won't it? Yeah, look, I, I take a lot of confidence of the positions I'm getting into. I'd be more worried if I wasn't getting chances to score. Like I said, uh, I feel like I'm making good runs, offering a lot uh, when we have the ball to my team and without. But, yeah, it's uh, it's only a matter of time before it comes. Uh, I still like, believe I can attribute a lot of goals to the team. And uh, everyone, I think, believes in my ability here. And we just need to stick to what we've been doing because it's just that final pass or the final strike that's not coming at the moment. Mm, and it's bound to come at some point for you personally. Now, listen, as I say, you've been a professional for a, a very long time now. Um, 31 years of age. I think you first burst onto the scene with the Wellington Phoenix in 2007, uh, which is probably around the same time as, as Facebook started taking hold. Obviously, Twitter comes in, Instagram. So when, when we're talking about negative reports, it's not just the journalists writing articles. As time has gone on, fans have greater access to players. So how, how are you finding that? And, and how do you remove yourself from negative comments, not just from journalists and pundits, but fans themselves? Yeah, it's a tough question to answer because every individual deals with it differently. Uh, I think everyone who keeps up to date with football knows, obviously, uh, I've played at Melbourne Victory, which is a big club, and moving to Sydney, uh, their biggest rivals. I've had a lot of criticism online over the last couple of years and after the results and performances my whole career. Uh, look, there's no one answer. I, I feel like I do pretty well ignoring a lot of it. And I think uh, a good place to start is not looking to begin with. But uh, like you said, on Twitter, more so, probably it's more in your face. Um, but, yeah, I think young players need to get educated a little bit on it to deal with it because on the other end of it, uh, I don't know if it's going away anytime soon. Yeah, so how does the A-League help these younger players coming through? Because obviously you're, you've got a, a wise head on, on wise shoulders, a wise body, in fact. So uh, what, what does the A-League do and, and the different A-League clubs, how do they help the youngsters coming through to ensure that they don't read too much into these comments because otherwise, it, it can cripple them. Yeah, you're right. Uh, I think our players union, the PFA, uh, can offer some sort of courses or some sort of dialect around it. Um, and look, just raise awareness of what to expect, maybe. Um, like I said, this is one side we can control. And the other side, fans or people watching the game, it would be great for them to sort of get, be put in the athlete's shoes and see what we deal with. But uh, I think it's going to be a long process that's been going on for a long time. And uh, like I said, there's no one uh, perfect fix. Mm. At first, when social media first took off, were, were you one of these people that would engage with the comments? Would you would you sort of fight for, for yourself online? Or have you always taken the stance of, they can say what they want, I know how good I am within myself, I don't need to uh, take part in all that negativity online? Yeah, the, the latter, I've never responded to any of it. Uh, it would make you sick if you've seen some of the comments or uh, message I've received over the years. But, um, you know, it's something that's really tough, like a younger guy uh, to deal with. Uh, it's, uh, you know, you, you don't really wish that on anyone. Mm. And um, like I said, some people ignore it, like myself, or some people would feel like they need a response to it. I don't think either way is a, a fix. So there needs to be other alternatives that I don't have the answers to at the, uh, at the moment, to be honest. Well, thanks for being so so open and, and honest about that sort of stuff. I, I hope you're open and honest about my next question because um, 
it seems that whenever you play against the Wellington Phoenix, you, you really turn up and um, <laughs> like the best version of Costa Barbarousas turns up and, and scores goals. And, and it was no different earlier in the season, a, a brace of goals for Sydney FC against uh, the Wellington Phoenix. What is it? about that encounter, whether you're with Brisbane or Melbourne Victory or Sydney FC, that makes you lift your game and want to score goals against your old club? Yeah, maybe it's because I know most of my family's watching. <laughs> <laughs> they, all, uh, they all support the Phoenix. So, uh, I want to rub it in their face a little bit more, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just that that spurs you on and you, you want to you wanna, um, put them to the sword because of that. Yeah, look, uh, over the last few years, I think the Phoenix have done a really good job. Um, and I actually love watching them play, you know, under Uffi and the team that have got together last year and this year. Uh, I think they're a great side and they've been unlucky towards the end of last year and at times this year. Uh, and every time we play them, they give us a hard time. So uh, I know we need to be at our best and, Thankfully, I was able to score a couple against him this time because otherwise, uh, yeah, it would have been a tough game to get a result. When you personally look back on your time with the Wellington Phoenix, you had a couple of bursts once as a, as a youngster when you first came on the scene and uh, second uh, stint was as a little older and wiser. Why do you think that both stints, we, we didn't really see the true Costa Barbarousas? Yeah, the first time, like I said, I was very young. I was there for three years. And uh, like a lot of young guys, especially in an attacking position, uh, every year, you know, uh, a lot of guys going to come in or uh, a foreigner and it's going to automatically just put you down the pecking order. And uh, I always tried to put my best foot forward when I got a chance. And I think I did okay when I, when I did get a chance. Um, and just I had to move on after playing only about 15 games in three years. So um, that really was mostly out of my hands, I think. And um, the second time, I thought we had a great squad, you know, on paper. And I really did come back uh, thinking that we could challenge for the title. And, uh, you know, just things just didn't work out. I think, um, you know, early, Ernie had done a great job up until then and uh, really sort of unlucky for him. I don't know what happened, but we just weren't getting results, playing some okay stuff at times, but um, scoring and then conceding probably more than we were scoring. And uh, then we, you know, changed coaches, Greeny and Des came in um, and had to develop pretty well. We got some good results, but Ultimately, we just finished second out of the, out of the playoff spots. So um, it was really disappointing. But I, like I said, since then, they've kicked on and they've been a really good side for the past three years. Mm. In the first stint, do you think they were perhaps guilty of, of not giving the youngsters a, a decent enough crack? Because when I think about yourself, I think about Marco Rojas, we know the talent that you guys possess, but in those days, you weren't given the full backing of the coaching staff. Do, do you feel the same way? Yeah, I do. But I think that happens uh, all around the world. You know, you see it all the time. Uh, talented youngsters have to move on to get an opportunity elsewhere. Uh, and you could look at it for myself as three years wasted, but I think pushing on and, and being brave to make a move to Brisbane really launched my career. So. Uh, I could have achieved and played more games in those three years, but ultimately, like I said, that pushed me moving to Brisbane, which really launched my career. Yeah, Brisbane, Melbourne victory, Sydney FC. I mean, geez, you've, you've had a wonderful A-League career, Costa, uh, winning premierships all over the place. I think you're gunning for your fourth uh, with Sydney FC now. Uh, when, when you look at the current crop of teams in the A-League, who's going to be there at the pointy end of this season's competition, do you think? Sydney FC and, and who else? Yeah, well, you can't really bid against the Mariners at the moment. Uh, everyone's waiting for them to sort of slip up, but I don't think they will. So... 
they've done a great job to turn things around. Um, I think City, Melbourne City, obviously, playing some really good stuff. Uh, Western United, when they have all their players available, are a really dangerous team and they're hard to break down. So those sort of four or five teams, I think, will be there or thereabouts. And, and you haven't mentioned one of your, your former teams there, Melbourne Victory. When you look at their, the, the current plight of that side and they're, they're fixed firmly to the bottom of the A-League ladder, do you view that with some sadness, uh, given that you are uh, one of their top scorers? I think you sit third on the list all time behind Archie and, and Bessart. There, there's got to be some sadness there when you see where they currently sit. Yeah, of course, I think for the competition as well, because competing is great for the league. Uh, fans turn up in numbers. I think uh, a filled out Amy Park is one of the best fights in the league. And uh, historically, Victor has played some great football and obviously been very successful. So uh, I think a lot of people want to see them bounce back uh, because you know when they are up there like us, everybody wants to beat them and uh, gets up for a victory game. Uh, like I said, you, you can't really uh, beat a, a thought out Amy Park when you're coming as a visitor and when you're playing there as a victory player. Mm. Well, Sydney FC have Melbourne victory coming up. Uh, what's that Saturday? So how are you feeling ahead of this game? Do you think uh, this, is the, this is the fixture where you can bounce back and score some goals against your former team? Yeah, I hope so. It's sort of one of those games where... They're on uh, not a great run, obviously, and we're confident that we can get the three points and get a win. And you're just uh, hoping that they don't really explode and, <laughs> and turn the corner against you. Because uh, as you can see on paper, I think they, they've got a pretty good squad. Things just aren't happening for them. But we, uh, we need to keep the pressure on them, get the win. Uh, hopefully I can get a couple of goals, like you said. Uh, and the turning point of the season will be against us this weekend. Yeah. Hey, Costa, away from the A-League, um, we're, we're currently trying to build up to a FIFA World Cup next year, and there's also the Olympics where we're sending a, a men's and a women's team to Japan, hopefully, fingers crossed. Uh, what, what does your international future look like, and, and what kind of conversations have you had with Danny Hay about the prospect of World Cup qualifying and, and a World Cup in 2022? Yeah, it's just been so tough trying to plan anything for Danny. Uh, he had obviously a couple of really exciting games lined up last year. That didn't happen. Uh, and I've, I've spoken to Danny a few times and told him that I'm still uh, very focused on achieving some goals in the national team. Um, we, we don't know exactly when those qualifiers are going to take place, but I definitely have made myself available. Uh, the Olympics, I think, are going ahead at this point. Um, I would have loved to be involved if they take one of the three overage players. But, um, yeah, we just don't know at the moment. We also have an uh, Asian Champions League campaign where we don't know who's going ahead. So those things all still need to line up at different times, hopefully. But uh, I've always made myself available for the national team and I'm very excited with what Danny's uh, said to the group and, and from watching the games against Northern Ireland and Lithuania, they've played some great stuff. Yeah, so what are the conversations like between you and, and Danny? Uh, how often do you talk? And, and like, how excited are you about having Danny involved as the All Whites head coach? Because I think his predecessor, the... Um, the, the used car salesman, Anthony Hudson, I think he got people offside a little bit, but there's a genuine excitement about Danny Hay. Yeah, uh, I've always been a fan of him. Uh, I told Danny, I remember he used to have a column in the newspaper and uh, when I was younger, and my dad was just saying, yeah, I like that Danny Hay he always tells it how it is. <laughs> um, so I speak to Danny every few weeks. Um, when there's obviously something to, to say or there's news. Um, and, you know, he's very understanding of guys having family at this time, uh, willing to go away with the chance of, you know, having to do quarantine 
the way back. But I had made myself available for those games that didn't go ahead. So hopefully the situation just keeps improving around the world and um, the games become easier and easier to sort of uh, deal with travel-wise and being away from family. Yeah, it's going to be a massive sort of end of 2021 and a huge 2022 if we can line up those ducks in a row because you're thinking about uh, Oceania, World Cup qualifying, an inter intercontinental playoff possibly, as well as the World Cup itself. It's going to be a massive year. Do, do you look at that with um, massive excitement or does part of you think, geez, there's going to be so much football to be played. Where, where do I actually live a life in between times? No, that's been my career so far. You know, most windows had international games to go to. And uh, you don't really want to trade that for anything else because once you're retired uh, with no national team games to look forward to, uh, you're going to regret um, regret thinking those things. So uh, I, I just want to make the most of it. Um, I'm uh, in really good shape physically. Uh, I feel good and I want to make myself available to play in as many games as I can. Yeah, good to hear. And when you look at the quality of the All Whites at the moment, they've got some good young guys coming through. I'm thinking about Joe Bell, obviously, Sarpreet Singh. Um, we've got some really exciting attackers, people who are comfortable on the ball. They, they live on the ball, and, and that's got to be comforting for somebody like you. Yeah, uh, I think in the past we've been really strong defensively, um, sort of bridging that gap between um, in build-up play from, from the back, um, building up slowly and in between the lines. We struggled a little bit and like I said earlier about those games uh, that Danny had first in charge, you could see that uh, happening. You know, people getting in pockets, playing between the lines. And uh, as a taken player, uh, it makes you very excited because then you can make your runs off people being on a half turn and, and knowing where the ball is hopefully going to come. Well, Costa, uh, it'll be awesome to see you in the all white shirt once again. And, uh, mate, I hope, I hope that you start banging in those goals uh, for Sydney FC and it can start against Melbourne Victory. Thank you so much for your time on the Kiwi Football Fix today and for being so candid, open and honest. A pleasure. Thank you for having me again. Have a good day. Now, the ISPS Honda Men's Premiership Final is this Sunday. Gets underway at 3.10. We've got live coverage on Sky Sport 7, that is, in Sports. It pits Auckland City FC gunning for, I think it's like their 1,000th title against Team Wellington. And uh, it's almost a bit of a decider, if you like, because they've met in finals four times before and they've split them both. We're lucky enough to have on the Kiwi Football Fix right here, right now, the two head coaches, Jose Figuera from Auckland City, Scott Hales from Team Wellington. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time today. Hey, Goran, how are you? I'm very well, Jose. Scott, you're doing all right ahead of the big game? Yeah, really good, thank you. Thanks for having me on. No worries. As I said in the intro, it's, um, it's almost like a, a fifth and final game decider in the final season of the ISPS Honda Men's Premiership as we know it. Auckland City against Wellington. You've met a number of times throughout the season. Uh, Auckland City with the advantage there. What's going to be different on game day come Sunday, Jose? Yeah, I think you're dead right. It's, it's, uh, it's probably fitting. It's a final, the, the, the final ever game of this format between you know, historically, certainly in, in the recent times of, you know, two of the most successful clubs. And, uh, you know, I think, as you've seen from the games this season and, and the previous years, you know, I don't see it playing out much different to really top sides, um, you know, two two teams that will be, you know, well prepared, really, really tactically sound. And I'm sure it will be, uh, you know, it will be a great, a great spectacle, but, uh you know, no doubt it will be one of those, um, you know, tight, tense affairs that we, uh, you know, we, we all enjoy in, in those big games. Scott, have you been saving something special up your sleeve for the final? Because throughout the regular season, there was a 3-1 loss uh, that you suffered at the hands of Auckland City and a 2-2 draw. And in that game, Auckland City played the majority of the game with a man down. So what special plays or, or tricks can we expect from your mob in the final come Sunday afternoon? Yeah, I think it's I think it's really important to note that we're in really 
we're in hot form at the moment. We've um, we've you know we've won four on the bounce. Um, you know, we think we've scored sixteen goals and only conceded three. So uh, our confidence and our form is. Is, is bang on heading into the into the you know the the cup final. So um, we, we'll always have something um, up our sleeves to to present to Auckland and what we do with with any other team in the league. And I'm sure you know Auckland will have the same. But you know our our focus right now is is to continue our hot form um, into the into the big game. Scott, how much do you owe that that hot form and the confidence? to somebody like Hamish Watson. He scored so many goals this season. He scored a hat-trick in the semi-final against Hamilton Wanderers. How infectious is he for your squad and, and, and boosting the morale? Yeah, he's really important um, to, our, to our group of players, integral to, to what we want to achieve this year. Um, like I said before, we've, we've scored a, a number of goals. Um, Sam Mason-Smith obviously popping up with a hat-trick the week before as well and it's it's a testament that we've only conceded three goals in in four games as well so we know that our we know that our defense is in is in top shape as well uh midfield's working really hard but yeah um you know i think Watto's getting um you, you know a lot of a lot of praise at the moment um rightly so but it does spread across the group um that you know when we we do have someone in form like Watto and sam's pitching in as well but it's you know, it's so important that, you know, other people recognise that, you know, our defence is, is made of stern stuff at the moment as well. Jose, I don't expect you to give away your entire game plan to shut down Hamish Watson, but, I mean, you must be giving some, uh, some I suppose, uh, importance to what he can do for Team Wellington and the importance for you guys to shut him down in order to win this title on Sunday. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we our, our processes don't change this week in terms of, you know, how we prepare and, you know, look at the the areas we can, you know, we can obviously, you know, hurt Team Wellington, but obviously respect the areas of their their great strengths. And, you know, Hamish is certainly one of those players. Um, I think in the most recent game, you know, we, we dealt with him really well, apart from, uh, you know, not marking him from 45 yards out. And he, he lobs our keeper from from halfway line. Um, but you know he's uh, yeah he's 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 a top player he's one of one of the top players in the league um, you know we've got a number of those players as well um, and you know in finals you know you need those big players to to show up and and you know uh, make make the most of those those details um, you know in those small moments so um, so yeah look we've you know we're confident we can you know, keep the shackles on him as best as possible, um, but also realise, and I think Scott's touched on it there, that, you know, he doesn't just make up their team on his own. There's a number of, uh, you know, top, top players in there that obviously I know well as well. So, um, yeah, look, we've, we've got to be right at the top of our game on, on Sunday. Scott, were you worried that when Hamish lopped off his mullet mid-season that much like Samson, he'd lose his power? <laughs> No, no. I think I think actually, the the whole thing around the mullet and the the socks rolled down and and, and what was what was happening was um, was going in his favour. Obviously, when he you know he decided to to shave it off for, for mental health. Um, obviously, the whole team got behind him and supported him for that. But yeah, um, uh, yeah, he's he's in great shape. He's in great form. Um, it'd be a huge game at the weekend. Yeah, a man who was um, in pretty good form for Auckland City in front of the goal, Logan Rogerson. Scott, you don't have to contend with Logan. How happy are you about that? Oh, I think I think it's great for Logan to to be given an opportunity to go overseas and and you know get back into the pro game. Um, I think anyone watching the league um, could see that he was he was ready to to go into the pro game again. So I think it's great for. I think it's great for Logan. I think it's great for Auckland City. I think it's great for New Zealand football. It gives obviously the the All Whites head coach, uh, um, you know, another another scenario um, going forwards. It shows that the you know the strength of the league with the players in the league um, are you know putting themselves out there and and testing themselves in in good environments in Europe. Um, but like we also know that you know Logan. Logan doesn't make Auckland City tick on his own, um, and they've got enough firepower uh, and enough, you know, coverage of the squad to to put someone in who's who's going to be just as good as what they've got um, or, or had with Logan. So, um, yeah, like we're, we're pleased for Logan for the for the country, but at the same time, we know that Auckland City have still got. 
you know, big strengths up top um, that they can call upon. So um, it's not it, it's not all uh, it's not all roses. Jose, can you shed any more light on on where exactly Logan is going to pop up next? Because uh, I think I, I saw on the Auckland City website it was basically just alluded to the fact that he's heading offshore, but no destination in mind. So where exactly is he going? Yeah, so he's he's uh, he's, he's headed to Scandinavia. Um, obviously, he's he just got to kind of you know formalise all the final little details when he gets there. So. Again, you know, we'll obviously just respect that. You know, he wants to get all of those things ticked off, and uh, you know, and uh, allow that club to, you know, to go through their processes and and announce 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 it before we obviously um, obviously do as well. So, um, but yeah, as as Scott alluded to, chuff chuff for him. Um, you know, I worked with Logan when he was in the New Zealand under 17s all those years ago. Um, you know, he has had that opportunity in you know in the A League and the professional game. You know, didn't quite work out for him, uh, and I think it's just another example that a the, the pathway to the professional game is never a straight one. Um, there's never a, um, a magic pill to take, um, but you know, I think it um, highlights as Scott, again. Scott touched on the strength of the league, uh, the standards of of the environments across the league um, of this league, um, and you know, I just hope that that those standards can can continue moving forward and. You know, we can see more players uh, making making that leap leap forward. Absolutely, Jose. On, on a personal note, for the, for you, uh, you've obviously had great success uh, with Team Wellington when you were there as, as head coach. You, you won the ISPS Under Men's Premiership with them, um, OFC Championship. You, you led them to the FIFA Club World Cup. So, uh, are you a little conflicted when you come up against them in a final? Now wearing an Auckland City FC uh, polo shirt. Oh, look, I think probably the cast on that, you know, the very first game back against them was 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 obviously, you know, always th- there's those kind of feelings there, and uh, you know, it's 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 a great club. Um, I had a great few years down there. Obviously, I worked closely with with Scott as well, um, and you know, uh, you know, there is a side of me to see that, you know, they're they're continuing to to develop and as I said raise you know keep the standards high across the league and you know promote uh you know top quality players you know both domestically and you know and guys that guys that come over from from overseas just like ourselves um but you know when that whistle goes uh when you're sitting on the bench when the players cross the line um all of that very quickly goes to the back of your mind and you know I'm sure Scott will say the same you're just focused on you know wanting to get uh wanting to get one over over your over your over your club or over the, over your rival, uh, and you know again straight after the game, there's there's a huge amount of respect for you know the players, the, the coaching staff, the clubs. Um, you know that that after the game, it's all you know fairly fairly amicable anyway. Oh, not from Scott's point of view. He was saying earlier that he absolutely hates your guts, and you really stitched him up, leaving him with Team Wellington. Scott, feel free to um, just elaborate on what we were talking about earlier. <laughs> no, I think think what Jose just said um, uh, when he when he referred to us as them um, uh, kind of answers all the questions really. Uh, yeah, it's it's the same. It's the same from this end as well. As soon as the as soon as the whistle goes, then then you're at war. Um, and then as soon as the the final whistle blows, and you know the the you know the ceremony's done, then you know Jose and I'll have a you know no doubt have a catch up and a. And a conversation about the game and life, and yeah, we've remained friends through, throughout. Um, um, you know, me being at Team Wellington as head coach, and Jose being at, um, head coach of Auckland City. I don't expect you to pee in his pocket, Scott. But um, you know, what what kind of team did you inherit from Jose when you took over as head coach of of T Dubs? Yeah, Jose left the left the club in a really good shape. Um, there's no doubt about that. With the success that was. That, that we had as a that we had as a club when Jose was was in charge, um, and obviously when you do have when you do have OFC Champions League and things like that that are still ongoing, and you know you did play at the Club World Cup. There's that there's that respect for Team Wellington um, that you know even prior to Jose being there, um, Team Wellington have had. So we've we've continued in that form, um, and you know we are. We are one of um, the best, the best clubs in New Zealand, and have been for for recent years. So, 
it's just really pleasing that we can continue that success up until up until Sunday. How do you both feel about the uh, the, the league finishing in its current structure on Sunday? Uh, Scott, you kick it off. I was hoping you can ask Jose. Um, uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's um, it's a strange one um, because of because of the success of the clubs. Um, uh, it's it's you know it's a it's an emotional time. Last week when we played our last game at at Davy off Davy F and the you know and the, the the format that it is and and what we are and what shape and form we are. Um, I think it's really important that you know when Jose spoke earlier about the making sure that the standards are, are met um, to make sure that we do still provide the the competition um, of the standard to allow uh, the player, the Kiwi player, to go abroad and experience U Europe and put their best foot forwards rather than just going to Europe uh, or, or wherever it is in the pro game. I think, I think that you know, my feeling of the the ISPS Handel Premiership has allowed allowed players to go and put their best foot forwards, um, rather than just going overseas to try and get a contract or at least you know m make uh, make a career. Um, and that's that's all that I hope that the new format does. Jose, do you echo those sentiments? Yeah, yeah, of course, I, I kind of touched touched on it earlier as well. And, uh, you know, hopefully with, you know, the competition, if, if we want to say kind of, you know, opening it up, it gives an opportunity for, you know, those other clubs to, to see where that level has been, you know, where it's at, um, you know, and, you know, hopefully, yeah, we, we get to see, you know, that development continue uh, across, you know, across New Zealand. Of course, I think it's sad to see, you know, organisations, um, you know, Hawke's Bay, obviously Waitakere United, um, albeit Southern United weren't in our league last year. But, you know, I think there's a there's a lot of good people, a lot of coaches, volunteers that have put in, you know, not just not just hours, but years of years of work to, you know, make the National League what it was. And, you know, I think we can look back and, and actually call it a success. You know, Scott said, you know, we've had teams consistently going to Club World Cup. We've had players, uh, you know, and go there and compete, um, should I say. And, you know, we've had players, you know, from our league and from these teams, not just our two teams, but across the league, you know, go on to the professional game, um, you know, whether that's, you know, with the Phoenix or, you know, Europe or the US. Um, and, yeah, as I said, you know, I just hope that that, that those standards and those uh, those competitions, you know, uh, continue to, to continue to grow. Here, here. All right, well, we've got one final game in the ISPS Honda Men's Premiership. Let's get some predictions from the two of you. I'm pretty sure I know what, what way you're going, but tell us, Jose, why will Auckland City win on Sunday? And what's the score? Putting me on the spot. Um, look, I think, obviously, you know, we want to go there and we want to, you know, we want to win. We want to, um, it's always been the, the motto of the club. It's a club that's that's built on success and, you know, um, the league, although we've, you know, we've, we secured our first objective, which was to, you know, win the league. Um, and, you know, we want to, we want to secure that second objective, which was, you know, to get our hands on, uh, on that ISPS handed trophy as well. Um, for sure, it's going to be a tight game, um, two top teams. And you look at those types of games at any level, it will come down to those details and, you know, so far we've had a fantastic week and, you know, we're really confident to go in. Um, score line, um, yeah, look, I haven't really thought about that too much, whether it's 1-0 uh, or we win 9-8, I think it doesn't really doesn't really matter as long as we get the job done. So, uh, yeah, um, look, we're, we're looking forward to it. Um, this, these are the types of games players and coaches want to be part of and, uh, you know, I just really hope that both at the stadium or, you know, at home, people tune in and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll enjoy a, a real high-level game. Yeah, I'm sure they will. All right, well, I heard 1-0 or 9-8 from Jose. Scott, what have you got happening in the final from your perspective? Uh, yeah, like I said before, we're in, we're in really good form. Um, leading into the final, we, you know, we did set out target that we wanted to wanted to win the league, and we fell short uh, on that in the regular season. So, yeah, we've got we've got one more trophy to aim for as the last of Team Wellington. Um, uh, we're, we're confident. We're scoring goals. We're we've we've closed up at the back. 
um, a lot now as well. So we're in we're in hot form. We're really confident, and yeah, we just want to continue continue that form into the final and hopefully come away with a with a, with a win. Um, yeah, I'm not interested in a nine eight. Um, a two one would do me. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Both goals probably scored by Hamish Watson. Gentlemen, as the curtain comes down on the Premiership as we know it, all the very best for Sunday afternoon. Coverage begins at 3 o'clock on Sky Sports 7, Ben Sports. Kick-off at 3.10. Jose Figuera of Auckland City, Scott Hales of Team Wellington, thank you so much for your time today on the Kiwi Football Fix. Thanks, Goran. Thanks. Thank you.